Researchers say that virus-transmitting mosquitoes in Asia are evolving to grow resistant to insecticides. Now, they warn that there is an urgent need for novel ways to control its population. The study discovered a series of mutations that made mosquitoes impervious to popular insecticide chemicals. Now, this species variant was found in more than 90% of Aedes aegypti mosquitoes in Cambodia, granting them extremely high levels of resistance. The study warns that commonly employed strategies may no longer be effective in controlling the mosquito population. And for more on this, we're joined by Tiki Pang. He's visiting professor at Yong Lulin School of Medicine. Good evening, Professor Pang. It appears that Aedes aegypti, uh, the species of mosquito that we know carries yellow fever, dengue, as well as Zika, it just got more dangerous, perhaps. How concerned should we be, though, uh, that this newly identified mutant combination represents a greater threat to communities or, or even has greater potential for spread? Yes, of course, uh, Don, we need to be concerned, especially in view of the increasing dengue situation. Like, uh, as we all know, uh, Singapore has had record cases of, of dengue. But in my view, it's not really surprising that this is happening because, you know, any living organism faced with an onslaught to exterminate it will evolve genetically to escape the threat by introducing mutations in its DNA. You know, think of antibiotic resistance among bacteria, and even those escape variants of the COVID-19 virus in the face of the onslaught of uh, vaccines. But yes, we need to be concerned, uh, assuming, of course, that these resistant strains will spread more uh, widely. That, of course, requires more research. Uh, not, surpri uh, not surprising uh, development, as you put it, and, and perhaps almost expected, uh, Professor Pang. But let's look at uh, the insecticide that the study involved, uh, the use of uh, permethrin, a, a pyrethroid uh, insecticide that targets the nervous system. That's what's been in focus in this study. Uh, these super resistant mosquitoes evidently can survive it. How far might uh, the overuse of insecticide mm -hmm played a role here? Does it mean that we have to change the way uh, that we sort of target mosquitoes with different insecticides? Will they be effective even? Yes, of course. Um, resistance can always be overcome by uh, developing newer insecticides. But unfortunately, the pipeline for developing these newer insecticides is, is fairly empty. There are not many sort of coming along. And of course, I think the main issue here is, you know, why are these mosquitoes so strongly resistant? And, you know, it's sort of the factor really is that this new, uh, these mosquitoes can undergo mutation, which means they produce certain compounds which actually inactivate the insecticide so that it is uh, basically... Uh, turn into a harmless compound before it can get to the central nervous system of the mosquito and kill them. It also, these mosquitoes can reduce the capacity of the insecticide to actually penetrate the outer skin, the cuticle. And interestingly, some studies show that uh, these mosquitoes can actually adapt and change their behavior so that they avoid being exposed to these insecticides. So what does that mean then for a country like Singapore, Professor Pang? Uh, anyone who lives here will know uh, fogging is common. Uh, it, and that uh, pyrethrin, it, 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 permethrin, it is the insecticide, the synthetic form of it at least. That's what's being used here in Singapore to control uh, mosquito populations. Uh, do we have to do things differently? Does it negate the need for, for fogging at all? No, I don't think it does, uh, Don, but I think, let me begin by saying that um, many of these insecticides and permethrin, the agent cited in the study, is highly toxic to both freshwater and estuarine aquatic organisms. So it has potentially very serious uh, environmental impact on biological ecosystems. So having said that, in addition to protecting the communities from mosquitoes, which spread dengue and other viruses such as Zika and chikungunya, we need additional ways of controlling dengue. So what we need is a more integrated and holistic approach 
towards con controlling uh, dengue. Now, this, for example, I'm going to give you just seven ways, additional ways. There is the first option of non-insecticide mosquito control. I think you have yourself interviewed uh, people about the Wolbachia project in Singapore, the use of male infected Aedes aegypti infected with Wolbachia so that it reduces the mosquito population. The eggs that are laid by the females uh, do not hatch, okay? So that's non-insecticide control. And it's been fantastic. 30% of HDBs have now been covered, about 300,000 households. They have seen NEA reported a 98% reduction in mosquito populations. In Yishun, Tampines, I think, uh, Chua Chu Kang, and also in Bukit Bato towns. And importantly, when this mosquito Wolbachia uh, program has been started for more than a year, they have seen an 88% reduction in dengue cases. Okay, so that's the first alternative way. Secondly, obviously, we need to continue surveillance and early detection of uh, the dengue cases so that we can identify uh, hotspots uh, very quickly so that we can do uh, quickly put in control measures. Thirdly, public education and awareness. That's particularly important. Number four, promote personal protection. Okay, mosquito sprays, even the old fashioned use of mosquito nets. All right. Fifth, very importantly, we have to have the hospital capacity to manage the severe cases of dengue, including considering some new treatments uh, where there's a lot of research going on actually in, in Singapore, in, in MUS, for example. Uh, the sixth, and I think this is particularly important, enforcement of regulation and fines to reduce mosquito breeding sites. You know, fining households that are breeding mosquitoes. Importantly, implementing stop work orders at construction sites if they have been found to be breeding mosquitoes. And as you know, there are many, many construction sites around Singapore, especially after the relaxation of some of the COVID right. restrictions. And finally, but not less important, vaccines. There are a couple of new vaccines coming along, which are also going to help to protect the community. There are certainly developments still to look at in this field. Professor Pang, thank you very much for that. Uh, Professor Tiki Pang there, visiting professor at Yong Lulin School of Medicine.